Mic check. Mic check. One, two. Hi, and welcome to the Sunday School Breakdown. I'm your host, and I'm Wilman Murphy. And I'm a Sunday School teacher here at the St. Paul Missionary Baptist Church. Where are we? We're located at 2870 Helen Drive, East Point, Georgia, 30344. Our senior pastor is the Reverend Dr. Clayton Eugene Taylor, Sr. Our co-pastor is the Reverend Christopher E. Taylor, Sr. And we bring you greetings and good tidings from the St. Paul Missionary Baptist Church family. We welcome you to another edition of the Sunday School Breakdown. That is the SSBD. Thank you so much for tuning in yet again. I appreciate it dearly and severely. Let's move it on. Lesson six. Break the news. Call your friends and your families. Tweet them, email them, send them a text, and let them know that the Sunday school breakdown, well, you know, is about to go down. Drum roll, please. Lesson six. We're in the book of Luke, chapter six, verses 27 through 36. A very good lesson, a very practical lesson. Uh Oh, wait a minute. I see the prayer in hands. I got to do it. Got to pray. We're trying to jump right into the lesson. Okay, let's do it. Let's let's go to the Father. Oh, gracious and holy Father, we want to say thank you for this opportunity. We want to say thank you for this day, for waking us up, getting us started to another day's journey. We pray and acknowledge you as our Lord and Savior, Jesus. And we know we couldn't do anything without you. We wouldn't be able to stand here before you right now on this day. We thank you for clothing us. We thank you for feeding us. We thank you for touching our lives, Lord, and let the warm blood run in our veins. We honor you in everything we do. We ask you to forgive us of our sins and transgressions against thy kingdom. Have mercy on our souls, Father. We pray that you would cleanse us and make us whole in the presence of thine Father. It is in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's get to it. Ah, the Paul, the St. Paul Missionary Baptist Church. Yeah, that's it, at 2870 Helen Drive, East Point, Georgia, 30344. We aren't there yet. Haven't made it back yet. No. Nope. I know you guys are anxious to get back to the classroom to play with your friends. I know some of the guys are anxious to get back to your two favorite subjects. That would be recess and lunch. But we just got to hold off just a little bit longer. We want you to come back when it's safe. Now on Sundays they do host a virtual uh, Sermonic Sunday. Yes, from this building. Only about five, six people in the audience. Those are working staff members that they give you prayer, they give you read your Bible for you. They also will give you a couple of songs. Yes, and you will get the Holy Word. So check them out. They're on Facebook at 10 o'clock every Sunday morning. Let's get started on this day's lesson. Lesson six in the book of Luke, chapter six, verses 27 through 36. And the title of the lesson is called Love for Enemies. Love for enemies. That almost sound like an oxymoron. Almost sound like something that that we just not naturally train to do. So because I say this is, we're not totally conditioned to love our enemies, but Jesus is asking us to do this. I'm saying that Jesus has an upside down ministry. I said it many times, and each time there are verses that comes up that proves the point. His ministry is different from our way of thinking, right? Here, if you look at these 
the two gentlemen, they're upside down. That's the way the ministry of Christ is. And if you look in the center, this is actually a, a pond that has a cross in it. Actually, I think, think more like a pole that's been submerged in a lot of water, but with, for I would say, we're going to say it's a pond that has a cross in it. But you see at the bottom of the cross, is, that's a reflection in the water. And it shows that the cross is upside down. That's the way I categorize the ministry of Christ. It goes away our fundamental way of thinking. You know, in this lesson, there's not a lot of theology. In fact, this lesson is very easily understood, but very hard to carry out. Yes, you think a lesson that's even easily for people to understand would be easy for people to practice, but not so. The lesson is love for enemies. So, upside down ministry. Throughout the lesson, I'll be re referring back to this. And I want you to think about this because we've been trained naturally to think in the flesh and to think earthly. But Jesus' ministries make your head spin. It's upside down. It's going to go against a lot of the things that you've been trained, even by your parents, to do. Yes, I remember my parents taught us certain values as a child. It's a way to think when dealing with other people. And I'm sure your parents taught you all some of the same lessons because it tend to get passed down from generation to generation, from household to household. Yeah. But this gentleman right here say everything is up that upside down. And like I said, it makes your head spin, trying to calculate and predict the thoughts of Jesus. Stevie Wonder here, one of my special guests. In fact, I got uh, three special guests for you today. But Stevie is one of them. And as I was thinking about this lesson and going through the verses, and I was reading it, and I was just saying, wow. I remember being taught this as a little boy. And here's what Stevie is saying. I recite it for you. He said, looking back on when I was just a little nappy-headed boy, and my only worry was for Christmas, what would be my toy? So looking back when you were a child, you were taught certain values. You were taught that regardless of what people say, don't let it bother you. Because sticks and stones may break your bones, but words shall never hurt you. Let's look at our, our first verse in this lesson today. Chapter 6, verse 27, book of Luke. And that verse reads, But I say unto you which hear, so Jesus is talking to his disciples. Jesus is delivering a sermon. This sermon happens to be the Sermon on the Plains. We know he had another one that was Sermon on the Mount. But here he's on the plain. And Jesus has chosen his 12 disciples. So he's teaching his disciple the way of heaven, not the way of earth. But he, and so he's training them and letting them know how heaven sees things. See, we see things in the natural and occasionally we have been able to latch on to spiritual things and see things in the spiritual. But we mostly live in the natural because after all, we are natural beings. And so it says here in verse 27, But I say unto you which hear. Those are his disciples. He was saying, I want you to hear and listen to what I have to say. Now Jesus had some other followers there, some other people there in the midst. But he was talking specifically to his disciples disciples and he wanted those to be the one to hear now if anybody in the else in the crowd was paying attention and listening to the word of Jesus that was magnificent but once again he was training his disciples making them ready for a mission that they would have to do and in 27b would say love your enemies do good to them which hate you naturally 
we have been conditioned, we have been trained by our parents, and they were trained by their parents, that you don't always have to do good to people that treat you badly. But Jesus is saying to do what? Love them. To love your enemies. This takes a mature Christian to be able to accomplish this. Love those that hate you. What happened to an eye for an eye? And a tooth for a tooth. These are the type of things that we were taught as a child. Looking back on when I was a little nappy-headed boy. Yes. So as we become mature in the word of Christ, we see that his way of thinking is different from our way of thinking. Mm-hmm. Oh. And the, you guys know the hook in that song says, I wish those days would come back once more. I wish those days oh, never had to go. That song will be stuck in your head the rest of the day. <laughs> I know it's in mine now. So, so he said, bless those that uh, love your enemies and do good to them that hate you. Once again, goes against our natural way of thinking. But these are the words of Christ that he's teaching his disciples. And if God said it, it has to be the right way to do things, right? WWJD. What would Jesus do? Jesus would love his enemies. Verse 28. Bless them that curse you. And pray for them which despitefully use you. What? Say what? Yes. We may be able to accomplish this one. We were taught, once again, sticks and stones may break your bones, but names calling, cursing would never hurt you. That's what our parents taught us. As long as they don't touch you, right? As long as they don't lay hands on you, let them say what they want to say. So cursing here, we're going to use this cursing in the form of verbal abuse, not into that witchcraft type of stuff. We're not dealing with that. We're going to talk about verbal abuse. Somebody old-fashioned cussing. I'm a boy from South Georgia, right? So cussing, cursing. It didn't say to curse them back. It said to do what? Bless them that curses you and to bless them which despitefully <sighs> uses you. What? Yes. This takes some growing. It takes some developing. This takes a spiritual way of doing things. You got to gather your flesh and be able to be able to do this. You really got to tap into the spirit of the Lord and able to be able to do this type of thing to accomplish what does say the word. So Jesus is teaching his disciples. This is the way that Jesus sees things. This is the ministry of Christ. So when you latch onto the ministry of Christ, Christ, you got to do things a little bit differently than you're accustomed to doing them. And some of those things that you will have to do will go against your natural way of thinking. The ministry will be upside down. Yes. Typically, when somebody curses us, and that's some good curses out there, some good cussers out there, we blow our top. We lose our cool. We become 38 hot. We blow our top. But Jesus is saying, you should be blessing this person. You should be praying for this person. You should be telling this, saying good things about this person. You should be taking this person into prayer, into Christ, and letting them know and asking Christ to forgive this person 
for what they have done against you. Yes, you are to pray and bless them that curse you and pray for them that despitefully uses you. Use you. Yes. Take some spiritual maturity in Christ to be able to do this. And to be able to do this, you're going to need to kind of have an out-of-body experience to get out of your natural selves in order to accomplish this. I brought my cousin along. I got another special guest. I didn't realize. I didn't count him before when I said three. He'll make four. My, special, my cousin here would say, in order to do these type of things, you may just need to zip it and throw away the key. My cousin, Eddie Murphy. That dude been crazy all his life. I tell you, as a little boy, remember back when I was a little nappy? Yeah, that dude has always been crazy. My cousin. And he brought along his friend, Kenan, Alec, Kenan Thompson from Saturday Night Live. You guys know Kenan. And he's hosting a, a, a Zoom church. He's telling everybody, just mute yourselves. So when somebody curses you, right, you may want to just zip your lips and throw away the key. And then Kenan Thompson would say, just mute yourself. Mm -hmm. We've done this before, right? We all have at some point bitten our own tongues. We just like, ooh, I want to tell you something. But the God in me, I was about to go off. But the God in me, I'm going to pray for you. Even though you use me despitefully, even though you curse me, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to zip it and I'm, a, and I'm going to mute myself. That's a new phrase for biting your tongue. Next verse, verse 29, 29a. It says, and unto, and unto them, him, that smitteth thee on the one cheek, offer also the other. Lord, please. <laughs> Right. Now this is a figurative speech. Not literally. But what it means that if somebody hits you my next slide. If somebody hits you or do something wrong to you doesn't mean that you uh, literally turn the other cheek. But what it does mean figuratively is that you should be prepared to receive more yes if somebody do one wrong to you be prepared to receive other things to happen to you that's what Jesus was saying give them the other cheek that means you're going to get twice the amount of mistreatment is what I would say physical abuse but Jesus is saying just be prepared for more Make yourself ready for more. And lend it up. Lend yourself up for more. Not necessarily for more abuse. But this is the way Jesus is thinking. Be prepared for more. Make yourself ready because it may happen more than once. Has somebody ever done you wrong? More than once? Hmm. So Jesus said, offer the other cheek. Just make yourself ready to receive more. Your mind has to be right. In the 29, the other part, uh, 29, 29b. And him that taketh away thy cloak, forbid it not to take thy coat also. Right. So Jesus is saying, I, I'm allowing people to do things to me. Here in the picture, you see old-fashioned cartoon when, I don't know if this Brutus or 
Bruto, they had more than one guy that was the bad guy, that the bully. They always bothering Popeye, and Popeye would get the last word because he would use his secret weapon, his spinach. But you see, he just punches at the air, and Popeye is not phasing him at all. And I like this commercial, this um, picture, because as much as Brutus, uh, Pluto, whatever his name is at this time, not Pluto, but Brutus, is punching. It's not phasing Popeye. Popeye is able to receive everything. And you see, he's offering him up himself clearly. He's not trying to defend himself. He's just putting his foot in the way and just offering. I'm taking more. All you can offer. All you can give. Because some people just swing and swing and keep swinging and keep swinging and keep swinging. And God is blocking it for you. So Jesus said, offer yourself up. For more, be prepared. Turn to, to hit you on one cheek, offer the other cheek also. But then it talks about our your clothing. And him that taketh away thy cloak, which is your outer garment, also give them for the forbid, forbid them not to take thy coat also. So Jesus is saying, somebody take your out of coat. Here, your cloak here. They're taking this young man's cloak. They're trying to take his cloak. But Jesus is saying, if they take your cloak, offer your coat as well. Jesus is saying, just submit yourself to them. Make a sacrifice. Oh, this goes against our natural way of thinking. Right? Especially that turning the other cheek. Because our mamas told us, once again, sticks and stones may break your bones, the cursing, but names will never hurt you. But oh, if somebody hits you, uh-uh, don't you come home if you don't hit them back. And if I have to come up to that school and, yes, we've been conditioned if somebody hit you, you had better hit them back. But Jesus is saying, submit yourself. That goes against grandmamas and mamas teaching. See, Jesus is calling us to a higher calling. Right? I know that's a group, a uh, very good gospel group, Kevin Lemon and Higher Calling. Well, they call themselves heaven, uh, higher calling. Well, Jesus is. He was. He is. And he always will be the higher calling. And so Jesus is telling us that we need to, somebody take your cloak, your outer garment. Give them the inner garment as well. So Jesus said, just surrender. I said at the beginning, very practical lesson, very easy to understand, but not so easy to do. We don't, be, we don't behave like this. We being conditioned and trained from a child. Mm -mm. Somebody take your coat, you better take your coat back. Not offer more. But this is the way we think here on earth. Jesus has a higher calling, so Jesus have a heavenly way of seeing things. So Jesus is giving them a picture of what heaven looks like. Some of the behaviors in heaven. We you know uh, Jesus talked about the Beatitudes on the Sermon of the Mount. So the Sermons on the Plains, I'm labeling it as the g attitudes, the J-E attitudes, the Jesus attitudes, the way that Jesus thinks which is upside down from the way that we think. We think like Jane Brown, my special guest, and I have a couple of more, but we think like James Brown, right? Jane Brown would tell us that we should get some revenge. Jane Brown would tell us that Papa 
got a brand new bag. Therefore, and mama ain't take no mess. Therefore, I want some payback, some get back. That's what I said. The big payback. So Jane Brown would teach us that, uh-uh. Somebody cursed you, you get some get back. Why? Because mama ain't take no mess. It's amazing how we were able to say that so quickly without stumbling. My tongue stumbles all over that. Mama ain't take no mess. Mm -mm. Somebody hit you on the cheek. Oh, <laughs> revenge. Payback. The big payback. That's earthly way of thinking. This is not Jesus' way of thinking. That's the way we have been trained. That's what we've been taught. But Jesus said, you have been trained in the heavenly way. And now that you are at a certain position, I need you to start thinking higher. So Jesus is saying, we need to develop. We need to grow. I need your mind to be reconditioned. And think like the things of heaven. Thanks, James. This is your third week. I'm not going to use you next week. Pulling your contract. Isaiah 55, 8 through 9. And it reads, this is the way Jesus thinks. He said, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. So when I say bless them that curse you and pray for them that despitefully use you, yes, it goes against your way of thinking. Why? My thoughts are not your thoughts. And my your ways, nor are your ways my ways. Says the Lord. Jesus said, I don't think like you. You don't think like me. Your ways are not my ways, and my ways are not your ways. In verse 9, say, For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts. My thoughts, reach up and grab the word higher. And my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. So Jesus, I think in a much different way. Yes, it will seem that your world is upside down according to mine. But mine is the right way. Mine is the heavenly way. So Jesus is saying we need to recondition our minds. We got to go and spin a little bit. And get our minds reconditioned into a heavenly way. In other words, our natural way of thinking, we got to lose it. Yes. Lose that way of thinking. Thinking heavenly way. And, and to be able to do that, you're going to have to call and focus on Jesus. And, I, and ask him to come into your hearts. And if you come into your hearts, you will receive what he will want you to know. And he will take you to that higher calling so that maybe your ways will become like his ways. And maybe your thoughts, my thoughts, our thoughts will be more like his thoughts. Because see, his thoughts are higher. So maybe our high thoughts will be higher when we were able to just sit back and pull in the absorb the word of God. And absorb his wisdom. So we let it penetrate into our heads, our minds. Let it absorb into our bodies. And just find some time, some quiet time to just resonate and meditate. I heard our co-pastor say once before, sometimes we need to just get somewhere and be still. And let God come into you and fix you and prepare you for his understanding. 
Why? You see, there are two types of wisdom. That's earthly wisdom. Our parents taught us earthly wisdom. They told us, somebody hit you, you hit them back. Don't you let nobody mistreat you. Don't be nobody. Mm -mm. And somebody despitefully use you? No, 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 no. That's earthly wisdom. But then that's heavenly wisdom, which is godly wisdom, which is the wisdom of Jesus. And Jesus was saying, his ways are not my parents' ways. His ways are God's ways. In verse 31, Oh, uh, in verse 30, it says, Give to every man that asketh of thee, and, him that, uh, and of him that taketh away thy goods, ask them not again. Give to every man that asketh you. Oh, we got some work to do. This is the way of Christ. And for time's sake, we're going to move on. Verse 31. It says, and, and as ye would that men should do to you, do ye also to them likewise. So Jesus has said that the way that you want people to treat you, then you should treat them likewise. And maybe you should take the first step. That's heavenly, godly wisdom. So this verse speaks of the golden rule. You guys know the golden rules, right? This verse 31 is the golden rule. As you would have, as you, as ye would have that man, men should do to you, do ye also to them likewise. So however you would prefer people to treat you, then you should treat them that way. The golden rule. Therefore, whatsoever ye would that men should do unto you, do ye even so unto them. You take the first step. If you want people to bless you, treat you with kindness, then why not take the first step and you start treating people with kindness? You start blessing others. Yes. See, it's not actually what you've already done for people. It's just if you have a good thought in your mind that you would like the way of people, people to treat you, take that good thought and say, oh, I want people to wish that I won the lottery. Well, maybe you should wish that somebody else won the lottery. We'll win, we'll win the lottery. We'll win the lottery. Yes. Everything that you want good to happen to you, wish that for somebody else. So whichever way you want to be treated, then you should treat people that way. Yes. I know we do that, right? We try, we try. We don't want people to take advantage of, of us, so we should take advantage of other people. Do unto others as you would have others to do unto you. The golden rule. Now why is that rule called golden, by the way? Somebody tell me. Why is it, it called the golden rule? Because gold has value, right? And gold has a certain amount of value, and the uh, uh, value of gold tends to always increase. Most of the time, gold goes up. The price of gold goes up. The value of gold goes up. So this golden rule should always have value. This rule should always have value. Hence the word golden rule, it has value. It has moral value. Now, I say I have a special guest for you. And this special guest, I ask that you basically... Um, Remember verses 27 and 28 and 29. We're supposed to bless those that may, you may feel like have used you. You should bless those that you might curse you. You should bless those that disagree drastically with you. Yes, bless them. Pray for them. I got a special guest here. I don't know if I should say a friend or not, but he, I invited him to the show. And he, he wants, he needs prayer. He's, he's a little bit sick right now. Yeah. And I said, hey, we'll, we'll pray for you. We'll invite you to the show. His name is DJ. Come on up, DJ. Come on. Oh, now he's trying out X shy. Come on, DJ. I told, I, I prepped them. They're ready. You guys are ready, right? I, 
remember what Jesus said to do. Let me turn back a page. Jesus said, bless them that curse you. Right? And pray for them that would despisefully use you. So stay right there. I'm going to get DJ. He's acting a little shy. He said he wanted to come on the show, but now he's, I don't know. Don't go anywhere. Two seconds. I'm going to get him. Come on, man. You said you were coming. Okay. There you are. Oh, we got him. <laughs> I, 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 we got DJ. Yes, DJ. Donna J. Trump. We should pray for him. Remember what Jesus said? Just because you may disagree, he needs prayer. I don't know if he knows it or not, but he is a child of God. And we have to do good, even when folks may not necessarily do good to us. Why? Because Isaiah 55, 8 through 9 said, God's ways are not our ways, and God's thoughts are not our thoughts. Now, we want to be on this level, no, we'll never be equal, but we want to have more, a higher understanding of God. We need to start acting like, God, do some of the things God would do. What would Jesus do? Jesus said, love and pray. See, he feels kind of funny. He said, nobody likes me. It can only be his personality is what he's saying. He's, that's a confession. He came on the show, the Sunday school breakdown to confess. He said, nobody likes me. He's a little bit under the weather right now, so we need to pray for him. Remember what we said? What God asked us to do. All right? Let's move on. 32. You say, for if, we, if, for if ye love them which love you, what thank have ye? What's the game? If you want to love them that loves you, then, okay, you haven't gained anything. You haven't grown. You're just doing tick for tap. Right? So Jesus said, if you do this, for if ye love them which love you, what thank have ye? For sinners also love them that love them, love those that love them. So Jesus is saying, you're just a sinner, a standard, typical sinner, because sinners love them, public love them, right? So he's saying, that's not the golden rule. You treat people the way you want to be treated. Even if they don't, you don't agree with them. You treat them the same way. That's what Christ would do. And so in verse 33, And if ye do good to them which do good to you, what thank have ye? For sinners also do even the same. Jesus said you hadn't grown. If you want to do good to those that do good to you, where's your growth? You haven't stretched. You haven't grown any. You haven't challenged yourself. If you want to love those that love you, where's the challenge? Right? In the gym, they say no strain, no gain. So you need to maybe strain your spirituality to help it to grow. Right? So Jesus saying, you expect people to love you that love you, that you love. That just one for another. That's no growth in that. So we need to pray for this young man. No, not so young, but yeah, you got the, you get the point. Verse thirty four says, "If ye have lend to them, of whom you hope." All right, DJ, you hanging there, buddy? We're gonna move on. Verse thirty four says, "If ye lend to them, of whom ye hope to receive." What thank have ye? For sinners also lend to sinners to receive as much again. Right? So Jesus is saying, what's the point? If you only lend to those that lend to you, you haven't gained anything. Sinners do that. But you're a sinner saved by grace. So now you're at a higher level. You have now that higher calling. So you got to change some things. You can't act the way everybody else acts. You got to be different. 
And so this is what Jesus is teaching his disciples. You got to think differently. Yes, upside down. So, Kenan again, Saturday Night Live is one of my shows. Said so somebody lend me some money. Jesus said, if you just on a loan to those that you expect to gain back from, what's your gain? Where's your growth? Where's your maturity? Where's your progression? Where's your elevation? You're on the level playing field. You just, somebody, you just give, you hope to receive, give, hope to receive. You haven't grown any. Verse 35. But love your, no, 34, 34, I'm sorry. And if you lend to them, wait a minute. No, no, I think we're at 35. But love your enemies, but love ye your enemies, and do good and lend. So Kenan here, Thompson saying, somebody loan me some money. Well, this young lady, this little girl has a bucket full of money. And she's going to loan him some. She doesn't know him. But she's going to loan him some money. She's young, but she has some spiritual maturity. She's just throwing money away. Just tossing it out of the window. To her, it came easy. Because it's not hers. <laughs> right? <laughs> we'll throw away somebody else's money. How many times as a parent have you told somebody, your child or a relative, you're throwing away my money. You're wasting my money. It came easy to them because they didn't earn it. So you just throw it away. This, young, this little girl just throwing away somebody else's money. And it's, it just seems to keep flowing. Looks like she's making it rain. From a, <laughs> let me move on. I know, I know. Y'all pray for me. Verse 35. But love ye your enemies and do good and lend. Hoping for nothing again. So you're lending money to people and you don't even hope to get anything back. Who thinks like that? No, no, no. When we loan to folks, if we don't put a mental note in our head, we're going to write it down. On this date, I loaned such and such and they promised to give it back on this particular date. And if they don't give it on this date, I'm going to stop speaking to them. Forever. Jesus said, hoping for nothing again. Verse 35b. And I just like this next slide because I like Danny. And Danny acting like acting like a hipster. Dollar, dollar bill, y'all. <laughs> that sounds funny for me to even say it. <laughs> but verse 35b. And your reward shall be great. And ye shall be the children of the most highest. So God said, if you do this for somebody in 35A, hoping for nothing again, you basically are at the intersection of mercy and grace. You show showing mercy to somebody and you're giving them grace. And God, this is what God wants us to be. And when you're able to allow mercy and grace to intersect, then you can be called the children. You shall be called the children of the highest. Last part of verse 35. No, the uh, middle part, because I see that's the 35C. For he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. Woo. So the children of God has a higher calling and they be kind for those that you shouldn't be kind to in a natural way. Those that would despitefully use you, the unthankful, and to those that evil, those that would curse you and not bless you, but bless you out. God said to actually bless them, pray for them, bring them to the corner of mercy and grace. And allowed to intersect. Because we all want to be called the children of the highest. 
Right? Don't we? Yes, we do. In verse 36, and we're going to walk out of here. Verse 36 say, it reads, Be ye therefore merciful, as your Father also is merciful. WWJD, what would Jesus do? Right? We should be merciful because we want to receive godly, fatherly mercy. So, the golden rule do unto others as you would have others to do unto you. Thank you. This is the Sunday School Breakdown. The SSBD. Thank you. Let's move on. Next week's lesson comes from the book of Luke. Still in the book of Luke. Chapter 10, verses 25 through 37. That looks familiar. Is that right? Ah, yes. Love for neighbors. Hmm. Love for enemies and love for neighbors. What's the difference? Tune in next week. So in order to accomplish all of this, this young man said, you can't do this on your own. No, you can't. You got to recondition your minds. In order to recondition your, not, your minds, you need... Jesus. You need Jesus. I need Jesus. Lord knows I do. You need Jesus. Amen. Oh, yes. Let's pray. Well, thank you, Holy Father, for today. Thank you for the lesson. We pray that it turns out to be a, yet another blessing. We thank you for your goodness and for your graces. Allow us to receive the, your mercy, your love, your guidance. Lord, give us a portion of your wisdom, Father. Father God, we pray for all of those that have been suffering with the COVID-19 viruses. Literally from the White House to church houses to Places, school houses, Lord, jail houses, form to nursing homes, Father. We just ask you to bless those that have been struggling with this. Oh, Lord, we ask you also to keep us safe. Protect us, Lord, spiritually, physically, mentally. We ask you to put a hedge of protection all around our bodies, Father. We ask you to forgive our sins and transgressions, Father, against you and against our enemies. Help us to be able to pray for them and to bless them and pray for those that despitefully use our name and misuse us, Father. It is in the matchless name of your Savior, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Thank you. Oh, you guys. You guys are too kind. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You just watched the Sunday School Breakdown. Sister Green's told me to put that label at the bottom. You can email me. Feel free. You got any questions? I'll answer them. Okay? Thank you once again. You guys have a great day. And we'll see one another next week. Share this lesson. Tell your friends. See if we get the numbers up a little bit, okay? But until then, you got to be blessed, be safe, and by all means, all means be encouraged. <laughs>